So last year, I was trying to come up with a new video subject for the official Renoise channel. And I wanted something a little bit out of the ordinary, uh, something along the lines of what I did for the variable trigger values effects video. In that, there's an effect chain combo using uh, meta devices that replicates something that's very easy within the modulation section of the sampler, but does it for effects. Because there, it's not actually possible. In the modulation section, it's easy to set something up so that uh, when a note is played, it initially starts with a random value before eventually settling towards just the regular value for every note. And what this does is allows you to create sounds that are more natural, more organic and acoustic sounding, uh, much like real instruments, just add that little bit of variety when the note is first triggered. And so having that ability in the effects section would also be a very nice thing to have. Now, the reason that actually doesn't exist as a simple effect in the effects section is mostly because uh, the effects section is not polyphonic. But having it available through the method shown in that video is good for samples that are usually triggered one at a time, such as drums. And so what I wanted to do for the new video that I was working on was to replicate something else in the modulation section, the stepper device. In that, the user creates a set of steps, each with a different value on each one. And uh, every time a note is played, a set of steps are gone through and a different value is then transmitted to whatever you've hooked it up to and you get a different effect every time the note is played. So obviously having this available in the effects section would also be a cool idea. It allows for non-random, uh, potentially complex, but uh, a controllable series of events, and it exists independent of the pattern editor and the automation, i.e. not tied to the timeline of song playback, but rather to the notes played. So you could set this up and it would just work automatically, either when the notes are played during the course of the song or when the notes are played live. So how would you go about setting something like this up? Well, first of all, you need to be able to detect when a note is being played. And you can use either the velocity tracker or the key tracker. The velocity tracker is easier to set up because it initially just comes in like this and all you need to do to get it to working here is reduce the max down to zero. The reason you want to do that is so that uh, when it's connected to the LFO reset, no matter what's pressed, it will always reset the envelope back to the very beginning. Now, the trackers are the only ways of doing this. And likewise, the LFO is the only device that is available that, that can do what we need it to here. And that is because of the one-shot toggle. And that is when the tracker is connected to this via the reset, it will play through the waveform in the envelope here just one time when the note is played. It seems like there's no other way around this, no other device is capable of this, and it does cause a problem, which we will see later. So, what we have it connected to is the formula device. And again, this one is non-negotiable. This is the only device that exists that allows you to retain data and uh, do complex things to it. If you're unfamiliar with a formula device, then having a look at it, you can see that you actually, yes, code what you want it to do. So, what is it doing? First of all, there is the round function. And this simply rounds the values up or down to uh, three decimal places, which is the resolution of each of the inputs here. 
and then the action takes place in the stepper function. Uh, by the way, although you can rename each of the inputs, you do within the code still have to refer to them as capital A, B and C in order to make use of them. So A is the trigger and that is what we have connected here from the LFO. So the uh, note is played, it triggers the LFO envelope and that comes through into the code here and it does one thing. It retains the previous value and adds another value to it, uh, rounding up or down the C value, which is the step. And because this is connected to the dry parameter of the distortion over here, what's going to happen is when the note is played, it is going to go up by 10%. Now, the C value, the step, that allows you to make changes to the amount that this is going to go up by. And it automatically detects when it goes past 100% and then will reset back down to zero again. This is a place that you would program something more complex, uh, perhaps a series of steps that are retained and gone through one at a time or in a more complex sequence, much like you saw in the stepper device, uh, that's the change that you would make in this place here. But I've just done something relatively simple as a proof of concept. There's also the B value, which is a reset. Now, this allows the user to tune the course of a song if you use different uh, size patterns and you want to reset the sequence. I'll just show you what happens. It just raises us up to one and then you'll see the drive, it will go down to zero, resetting the sequence. And don't forget to take this down below zero again, because if you just retain it here, then all that will happen is it will stay at the initial value. And that's it. This seems to be the only way of making this work. Uh, these three specific, although you can use the key tracker if you want, but it's non-negotiable to use the LFO and the formula connected all together in this way in order to make the steps gone through one at a time or more complexly if you want to program it that way. Now, as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm doing this unscripted video, on uh, this particular channel, as opposed to having released the scripted video on the official Renoise channel, there must have been a pretty severe problem with how this works. And it's not just that it's only monophonic, which I discussed earlier. No, it's the fact that, as I alluded to with the envelope in the LFO, if a playback of notes is too fast, then what happens is the envelope is never gone through to a sufficient extent to transmit to the formula a value other than 1, meaning that the trigger will always stay at 1 and never goes below that, so it's never ready to receive another played note value. And the reason for this is that the frequency parameter of the LFO, even when it's set to the fastest value, it still runs in lines per cycle, which means it's tied to the tempo of the song. So if notes are played fast enough, such as in the re-trigger that you're seeing here, then, as I mentioned, uh, transmitting the value via the envelope, because it's not going fast enough, it causes the problem. And this can also happen with other things, such as using phrases which are going uh, much faster than the song itself, but more commonly at low BPMs and or low LPBs, even playing the notes 
at a reasonably fast pace, something that the user might be able to do themselves manually, that is going to, because of the low tempo, slow down how fast the LFO is run through and cause the same problem. That makes this a much more common thing that the user might encounter and although it doesn't render the effect stepper completely useless, it is a common enough occurrence that I didn't feel comfortable enough setting up the full Renoise video and putting that out. But this is still a pretty cool thing. And this is one of the great things about working in Renoise. Instead of purely having uh, large singular features that will only work in one way that's pre-programmed, you're given a bunch of customizable, smaller, modular bits that uh, when you conceive of your own concept, you can understand how they work individually and piece them together in your own creative, customizable ways and bring your concepts to life. And I thought this was a pretty unique thing that I came up with. Turns out though, that it wasn't at all. Even though it was kind of a failure, I thought it was worth posting on the forum about this. Uh, but before I did though, I did a wee search, see if anyone else might have come up with a similar thing, and they had. In fact, we all had, within a few days of each other. Don't precisely know how that happens, great minds think alike or whatever, but we'd all come up with basically the same thing. The trackers and the LFO and the formula being really quite necessary to make this work, but even though other people came up with more elaborate setups, we all ran into the same limitation about the fast triggering of the notes played. Still, regardless of this, it is a pretty cool thing that we each came up with individually and because of that, I'll put a link to this uh, particular forum thread in the description of this video, as well as a link to the effect chain itself that I came up with that you'll be able to download and then import into your own Renoise songs and or instruments. <laughs>